it was tragedy on a whole new skill at General Hospital, Lagos Island. Last week, according to the next report, let's take a look. A somber mood, but yet tempers flared over the death of Dr. Ware Diaso by colleagues and friends alike. All agreed if proper maintenance had been done, she wouldn't have plunged nine stories down to her death within an elevator fraught with mechanical issues. I finished from the same building. Yes. Uh, I was a rep in the same building. Yes. Before my set, the lift was bad. Yes. During my set, we came in, we lodged a formal complaint, the lift was bad. I was on, I was on, this, I was on this same building on the 10th floor. The lift has locked me inside the same thing before. Meaning, 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 it could have been me, it could have been any other doctors here. So the question, the question we are asking is, does it have to get to the point where someone died? And the question, the question, yes, formal complaint, written document, we went for meetings, we did back, front, and meetings. HNC is involved, medical guild is involved, and I mean, nobody should be exempted. The question people are going to be asking is, is anybody going to be accountable for this event? Or are we just going to move on, like, not business as usual, let's just move on by Friday. Let's I go. Reports indicate several complaints had been made by visitors and workers regarding the said elevator, but little was done to address the issue from the hospital's management according to them. What is the way forward? The way forward is for us. The way forward is to have these solutions. The way forward is for everything to be fixed. You are forgetting that I could have been the one in that lift. So it doesn't have to be viral. It could have been me in that lift. The way forward, as always, is if there is a problem, then we must look for solution to it. And then you say that you feel for us, you don't. Because the truth is, every single one of us has experienced this thing. I'm not from this set. I finished my house job in 2021. And I was complaining about that from beginning 2020, before me complaining about it in 2020. I went to medical school with this person. I saw what she went through to finish medical school. So everybody's saying, you don't know. The truth is, you people don't know. You say you know, but you don't know. Because we have been suffering this thing for years. We have sent letters. I have letters on my phone from last year, the year before, the year, the year before that. And nothing was done. And you are saying, um, okay, you were resuscitating her tomorrow. And we were like last night. Why do we have to get to that point? Not even the presence of the wife of Lagos State Governor, who paid a condolence visit, would calm frayed nerves. We'll try to walk within the 48 hours. I cannot promise 100% 48 hours, but we will try to walk within the 48 hours. He has requested for it to be public. I can't answer that question. Why now? Why? I am not, sorry? Um, her death, her death has been made public. The medical community, Nigerians want to respond. It's very, very sad, unfortunate that we lost this very, very um, doctor and we feel very pained. Our hearts are very broken. And every doctor in Lagos is mourning right now on this on this great loss, because um, she's about she, she was just two weeks away from finishing her housemanship and going to the world. And and I think um, people that made this happen must be brought brought to book. Uh, I've heard, I just heard today that um, there have been constant reportage of the faultiness of the of the elevator that crashed this lady because she, she, she got crashed from the ninth floor to the ground floor. It's actually very sad. I can imagine the, the injury she had. On its part, among other recommendations, the Nigerian Medical Association is issuing a five-day mourning period to honor late Dr. Diaso while demanding investigation which led to her death. A two-day ultimatum is also issued the state government by doctors in the premises on accountability. Ni Wei Lo, Arise News.
That unfortunate incident has opened up another debate around the physical condition of many government-owned health facilities in Nigeria, while the general consensus about pervasive and condemnable neglect of public infrastructure continues to hold true. There always seems to be extra public concern shown towards the progressively deteriorating condition of hospitals and other health facilities where human health and well-being should enjoy supreme attention from the authorities. As a way out, there's a relatively old paradigm management scheme called clinical governance, which is in several ways like corporate governance. This ensures that healthcare facilities are internally and systematically governed in order to increase the chances of reducing to the barest minimum situations such as the one that claimed the life of the young doctor in Lagos. Joining us now to have a chat on all of that is Dr. Henry Ewunonu, a pathologist and member Health Sector Reform Coalition. Good to have you on the program and good morning. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, Ojinika, speaking with you face to face for the first time. Good, good morning, viewers. Good to have you. Now, the de death of um, Dr. Diasso inside that uh, elevator last week, like I said in my introduction, has opened a new level of debate around a you know, fiscal condition of many government-owned health facilities in Lagos or in Nigeria as a whole. Um, yesterday, the Lagos state government said it has submitted its initial investigation on the you know, elevator incident. Uh, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Information and Strategy say the elevator installer has been handed over to the police for questioning. A lot of questions here, but my first will be, what does it say about our clinical governance? Thank you once again for giving us this opportunity. Arise has been doing a lot as it concerns health from the COVID-19 time up to now. The Health Sector Reform Coalition is a coalition of several, up to 100 civil society organizations that are pioneering health sector reforms. One, and we are basing our activities based on the seven pillars of health systems strengthening prescribed by the World Health Organization. One, or key to that is service delivery, among others. The other one that pertains to what we are discussing is leadership and governance. It is true there that in the UK, the National Health Service in 1996-97, after the Labour Party won the election, decided that it's not all about funding. It's not all about buildings. It is not all about the big farmer. There has to be a framework for governing this sector. So the policy or the framework of clinical governance was entrenched. And what is it? It's just a framework through which healthcare organizations are held accountable or they hold themselves accountable for continuously improving quality of care and safeguarding high standards of care by creating that enabling environment in which excellence in clinical care is nurtured and can flourish. In the UK, there are seven pillars. But for low and lower middle income countries, such as Nigeria, we had to add other parameters, which we are here to take in for granted in other areas. These pillars include risk management, education and training, clinical audit, ICT, clinical effectiveness, finance or management, research and development. But in Nigeria, we had to add policy and law because up to 2014, there was no overarching legislation governing the health sector in Nigeria. Health was just mentioned in, just by in, just passing in the constitution of the Federal Republic, where we say we will have Minister of Health, we will have a Federal Minister of Health. That was how the only way Nigerian constitution recognizes health. But in 2014, we had the National Health Act. Another one is the funding mix. Till tomorrow, Nigeria, after hosting the 2001 African Heads of State meeting here in Abuja, 
and prescribe 15% of the annual health budget for health. The best we have done is 7%, and that was about 2012. Last year, it was about, um, about um, uh, 4 point something percent. This year, it's 3.56%. So we have to also prioritize that infrastructure. People build all sorts and call them hospitals. Some, some of the facilities we have are the ones we inherited from the colonial masters. Of course, you know that the UCH building was constructed in the 60s. The ones being done now, after three years, they leave start leaking. Equipment, we don't have enough. Utilities, water and power, taken for granted, 247 in the hospitals, we don't have. There are several hospitals that don't have running water, portable water. Ambience, the sanitation hygiene status of a hospital, they lay out. The WHO recognizes that the layout of the, the healing starts with the environment of the hospital. So clinical governance provides this framework for governing the health care delivery system. Just like after several attempts, Nigeria eventually, through the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, adopted the Corporate Governance Code of Nigeria. The National uh, Council of Health in 2006 adopted clinical governance as the new paradigm for providing and governing the sector. Till tomorrow, it is yet to be fully uh, entrenched. How does it concern what has happened in Lagos? Because if that hospital, that general hospital you done, is clinically governed, they will be continuously improving services, infrastructure, and how they do things. We have heard that there was a complaint about malfunctioning of that elevator in 20, 2020, 2021. Serially, it means that either the repairs were not effective or nothing was done. So we cannot continue this way. Something has to give. But I, I will still ap appeal to my colleagues, staying off work, unfortunately, most painfully, will not bring back our departed colleague. I would have opted for a situation where they use the five days to go through all the health facilities owned and managed by the Lagos state government to take stock, to do evaluation on everything using set standards. Before I forget, the National Health Act of 2014 stipulated that there will be classification of health facilities and technologies. That means there will be created some standards for evaluating and saying this is a primary health care center, this is a secondary health center, this is a tertiary health center, this is a super tertiary health center. Then thereafter, there are award certificates of standards. So the National Health Act envisaged that there should be standards for operating hospitals. This was not done. Negligence. Somebody dropped the ball. Somebody slept on duty. And this has happened. Something has to happen. And that is why we are saying, let this provide opportunity with which the health sector, and every, of course, this thing could have happened in federal secretariat building, there is multi-story complex, that never again would faults be reported and somebody will go home and be sleeping while there is a malfunctioning elevator, where there is a malfunctioning instrument in the hospital, where there is a life-saving critical care equipment for saving lives. It's not working very well where there are no drugs, where there is no blood in the blood bank, where there is no there are adequate personnel on duty. That's what we are saying. All right, uh, all right, doctor. Um, I'd like you to uh, talk more about uh, the efficacy of, of course, what we call the uh, clinical uh, governance and why you think that it has not been properly, uh, firmly, uh, absorbed in Nigeria. What is responsible 
Uh, is it a ministerial uh, indifference? Uh, is it a government thing? Uh, it, it, does it have to do with uh, uh, medical practitioners who are also managers of facilities in the country? And in specific terms too, uh, what will be the recommendations of your coalition uh, in the areas where things are lacking? Resident doctors, for example, are on strike as we speak. Are there recommendations uh, that you think can foster uh, such strike actions going forward ultimately? Thank you once again. Now recall that I said the National Council on Health, which is the highest decision-making body yes. as it concerns health at the federal level, approved clinical governance as the governance regimen or paradigm in health facilities, public-private, in 2006. It is in policy inconsistency in impl implementing policies. That's what has led us here. Another one is will, strong will. The other one is competence, knowledge, understanding of what the issues are. Health, unfortunately, is that sector that is owned by nobody. Unfortunately, again, we have no ombudsman in health. That is why, perhaps, investments in health from budgetary allocations and other issues are not commensurate with the need. So, if, for instance, the Federal Minister of Health had started pioneering clinical governance in the 54 federal tertiary health institutions since 2006 up to now, because there is an evidence. In 2004, the Cross River State Government, through the commissioner, Professor Joe and approved that clinical governance can work in Nigeria. And they turned around the health sector of that, that state won awards severally because of clinical governance. So it is something that is evidence driven. There is sufficient evidence to show that this works. It has worked somewhere in Nigeria. So why is it not working here? The corporate governance code leads the financial sector be it insurance, banks, other financial institutions, it is working. And that has sanitized to a large extent that sector. So if we apply clinical governance as the ministers are coming, let them come and dust the books. Let them go and look at that framework ap approved by the National Council on Health in 2006, modify it to suit the present time, and start implementing it. It is not about who heads the hospital. It is not about who is, uh, whether a doctor is a minister or is not. It is not. There are several issues that if we use this paradigm, because the, the measures there are measurable. I mean, the, 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 the prescriptions, all those paradigms are, are measurable. These are things that are, can tick. Oh, we have done this, we have not done this. Is there adequate funding? Is there, um, are there enough trained staff? Clinical e effectiveness, are there standards, treatment guidelines to follow? What of the uh, uh, adverse incident reporting and redress mechanism? Today, interprofessional rivalry is doing a lot of havoc in the public health sector. To the extent that it may be difficult for heads of clinical department to discipline even the cleaners or the hospital assistants that used to be called ward mates because the unions will spring up and start a strike. So the new ministers coming in, please, you need to sit down. Nigerians should stop distracting them. They should support the offices and uh, CSOs like my coalition, the Health Sector Reform Coalition, is ready with their document, waiting to engage with these ministers and once they are sworn in, to say, this is where we are. These are what the problems are. Absence of a strong governance regime that can provide enough leadership. Secondly, the National Health Act in Section 3, Sub 3 uh, 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 D, says the, Minister of, the Federal Minister of Health shall, on an annual basis, 
present an address on the state of health of Nigerians and the health system to the National Assembly and to the president. Since 2014 that the National Health Act was enacted, this has not happened. You see, we need to take stock. We need to know how we are performing. There are no measurable indicators. The SDG, SDG3, which is health for all, is there. There are several targets. There's things we can use to measure. We are not having them. I want to also pose to, the, to, to our viewers this morning. Why do we think some hospitals smell? That terrible foul smell in some hospitals, where is it coming from? How come then um, window nets in some hospitals are torn? So that a patient comes in for hernia surgery and we go back with malaria infection. How come hospitals don't have a patient's relations will be looking for where to fetch water for the patients in the ward? Have we gone to look at the state of toilet facilities in the hospital environment? What of the staff? Training and retraining. The resident doctors are on strike. Why? They said there is a part the government agreed they would do concerning medical residency training. And in, enacted it in 2017. Government is reneging on that. What of the hospital environment? Why should we, the hospital environment be overgrown with weeds? There are several adverse incidents, near misses, and so on. People die, and people say, oh, it is the will of God. Perhaps if this did not happen in Lagos, maybe we couldn't have heard about it. We we'll say it is the will of God. I don't think it's the will of God that we continue to go this way. Our morbidity, mortality, statistics, everything that comes to human development in disease, Nigeria is rating low always. So an opportunity has come, and let us use this. Lagos state government, you have been excelling. You were the first government, state government to enact your own state health law. Even when the federal was just dilly-dallying on it, Lagos went ahead in 2006 to enact their uh, Lagos state health law. Today, Lagos state is also advancing universal health coverage through um, expanding the health insurance cover. If you do all this, build all the gold glazed hospitals and so on, without a functional governance regime, it will not work. It will be akin to pumping funds through a dark hole. You will not get results. Well, you have mentioned this in your um, comment, your earlier comment. Yeah. As you know, the Nigerian uh, Medical Association comments that indefinite strike after Dr. Diaso's death and a five-day mourning period um, demanding uh, investigation, which the Lagos state government has commenced now. Doctors also, under the aegis of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, say they will commence a daily peaceful protest starting Wednesday, this Wednesday. They say that their action has uh, become necessary to press home their demands, which, like you've said, have been neglected by the Federal Ministry of Health and federal government, part of their demand was also to look into this physical condition of healthcare facilities. Now, this is not their first strike. Um, do you think it would make any difference? And what impact will this strike um, make on the quality of healthcare services um, that will be provided to patients right now that are really um, looking for help? Terrible impact. And let me just bring a an, an simple analogy. A woman has been having antenatal care, attending antenatal visits. But on the day she uh, went into labor, approached the hospital at the gate of the hospital, they said, no, we are on strike. Do you know how devastating that will be? A child starts convulsing. All the child's records are in a particular hospital. At the hospital gate, they say, sorry, we are not uh, taking anybody. We are on strike. Actually, the resident doctors are the cadre of doctors that are on strike. The consultants are working. But the way tertiary hospitals are structured, four to five residents to one consultant, you now see that the job of five people, one person will now do it. 
how well, how effective without one person be? That person will be bugged. So strikes are not good for the sector. Strikes are destructive to the health system. And that is why I will use this opportunity to appeal to President Tinubu. An African adage says, that thing that prevents people from going to work is work itself. Please, as we have called NLC, call NAD. Lay the cards on the table for them. Make promises that you can fulfill. They are your children. Talk to them. Tell them that the state of the nation now, the economy, with the, 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 the fallouts of the removal of fuel subsidy, the imprisoned hardship in the country, we cannot uh, 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 afford to have our hospitals closed. President Tinubu, please, hack into this call. It will take you less than 15, 20 minutes to talk to your children to say, go back to work. Let me sit down. Let me look at these issues. This is the one I can do now. This is the one I will do later. But this one, it may be difficult, given that we don't have all the resources. But again, those gatekeepers at the corridors of power may not allow this to be. Sometimes you wonder, actually, whose interests they serve. So the handlers of Mr. President, please facilitate this meeting. Don't grandstand. Invite Nadesco. Have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with them and any other uh, protesting group. As per the uh, street protest, just like we're having in the UK, the UK NH, uh, NHS nurses and doctors are, are protesting. I will want to remind my colleagues that nobody has died in the UK because the hospitals are locked. Nobody has died in the UK because there are for scheduled what we call cold cases, elective surgeries. We keep on, because the patient is not in danger of dying, keep on rescheduling. There are longer waiting periods, but people are also assessing care because the system will never shut down. But here, we shut down hospitals completely. In some situations, we have had some, not NAD this time, some other health workers who lock the hospital gate, who switch off the power, the immense electric power supply to the hospital, threatening the lives of babies in incubators. It has happened before. So after people go on strike, it takes, assuming the strike is called off today, it takes another one week for the system to restart. It is quite disheartening. All right. This shouldn't be. All right. All right, In Doctor. this era of reassured hope, yeah. we pray and hope, Mr. President, will, other issues will allow him to sit and examine and attend to those issues that, is, that are bringing Nigeria to their knees. Look at almost all the social development in, in, in indices. They are all health related. They are. So Nigeria should adopt or readopt and start implementing clinical governance. There are experts with the knowledge all right. to learn from, to tap from their wealth. All right, of Dr. Uh, we don't know. Yeah. There are states like Cross River State. There are hospitals here and there that have pioneered or piloted clinical governance and it's working. The incoming leaders should sit down and do doctor, stock taking. Doctor, please let, let me, me just quickly put in there. At that general Hello, doctor, who don't know, can, can you hear me, please? It happen in any of the Nigerian Army hospitals. Ca can because you hear me, please? I know that Nigerian Army has a department of Army Standards and Evaluation, and they do proper evaluation. They move from the army headquarters to those hospitals. They evaluate infrastructure. They evaluate the layout. They evaluate the staff, their qualifications, the, the, the mode of service delivery. They do everything that is lacking in the public health sector of Nigeria. The inspectorate division of the Federal Minister of Health, I don't know what happened to it, or State Minister of Health. All right. All right. Would like to uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.